It comes up in one piece. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. Proverbs 24. I said Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, verse 11 and 12 says, Rescue those being a lead weight of death. Hold back those staggering towards slaughter. And if you say, but we knew nothing about this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who guards your life know it? Will he not repay everyone according to what they have done? That's Proverbs 24, verse 11 rescue those being led away to death. And my question to you, listener, the Mark Harrington show, your voice of resistance, are you rescuing those being led away to death? And you say, well, what do you mean? Think about it. 50 million pre-born babies have been butchered since 1973 by abortion. 2,900 a day slaughtered. Every 20 seconds or so, a baby's killed in this country. You have all this outrage about what's happening in Ferguson, Missouri, and New York City, and enhanced interrogation techniques, and, and all of this talk about violence and supposed torture. And some of the same very people that get on their soapbox and on television, as I've said before, and talk about these horrible things, supposedly, have a total blind spot when it comes to baby killing. When they start paying attention to the children who are being killed, then I'll start paying attention to them. You're listening to The Mark Harrington Show. Go to our website at createdequal.net. You can find out more about us there. And today as my guest is Dr. Monica Miller, and Monica's a good friend, and she's, uh, she's an author. She's also the director of Citizens for a Pro-Life Society. She's been in this movement for many, many years. She's also a professor at St. Mary's College of Madonna University in Michigan. Dr. Miller, thanks for being on the Mark Harrington Show. Well, I'm so privileged and honored. I, I'm, gl- I'm glad, to be, glad to be with you, Mark. It's good to have you. And, and, and Monica, the reason I wanted to have you on, I mean, I've, I've known you for a while, and uh, I don't know when you released the book, Abandoned, but that really got me, uh, I read it, of course, uh, being part of the Operation Rescue Movement to a degree, uh, you know, it made me think back to those years, but you, you really outline it really well. Let, let's, let's do this. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to talk about the book a little bit up front. Okay. And then we'll talk about the use of abortion victim photos, which you are on the forefront uh, in the culture in, in advocating and using these for many, many years, decades. Right. And, and I think that there's a lot of confusion and misunderstanding as to why we do it, why we should do it, and that kind of thing. So I would definitely want to devote some time to that, because obviously, Created Equal, we use them all the time, and, right. and I make a defense on this program, but it's also good to hear others say that. So... Let's talk about the book, uh, Abandoned. Yeah, yeah, the book, uh, the book came out about two years ago in, in 2012, um, mm-hmm. the Abandoned, the Untold Story of the Abortion Wars, and it was published by St. Benedict Press. I have to give those guys a lot of credit, because um, I, I, I'm kind of fond of saying, uh, when, I, when I give talks about the book, if you want to make sure that you write a book that doesn't get published, Write it on the pro-life issue, <laughs> and uh, or the abortion issue, and yeah. write it from a pro-life perspective. <laughs> yeah, that's and true. You will, you will be uh, the 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 rejection letters will be flying <laughs> uh, into your mailbox. <laughs> I get um, you. But finally, I I, I, I got a, a publisher of Vision um, who 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 saw the merit in in the book, and it's been doing doing very well. I'm very grateful to them. 
so uh, abandoned the untold story of the abortion wars, and it, it is uh, a uh, real uh, story. I mean, it is a narrative history yes. of about 20 years of uh, pro-life activism, starting in the year 1976 and going through the year of 1994. And I really concentrate on, well, a couple of things I guess you really could say. Yes, I concentrate on what did we do for life, right, Mark? I mean, what, what, what were the actual practical, uh, 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 you know, down in the streets, pro-life activism, what did we actually do to, to save babies from abortion? But on top of that, or uh, uh, certainly as a, as a part of that, I really, really wanted to capture the essence of the abortion tragedy mm-hmm. and, and, and to really probe and, and to provide, um, in some ways, born out of experience, but in, but in another way also just you know, an intellectual probing into what, what is the meaning of legalized abortion. And, you know, while the book is, is written, uh, you know, the methodology, shall we say, the method, you know, the book is written from uh, a sort of an autobiographical uh, method, but, not, but I would argue, and I hope that you would agree with me, but I, I would argue that the main character... Uh, in 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 abandoned. Um, it's the, not the main you. Character is the aborted baby. Yeah, it's not you. That's true. Yeah, and that the focus the focus of that book is about the victims of abortion. Right, which is what I think makes the book unique, and why I thought it was such a classic. And uh, uh, you know, I think in, in in Jack Ames put it best when he said it was it's the Uncle Tom's cabin of the abortion issue. I mean, yeah. it, it really does it does capture those those years and. So let's dive into a couple of those, Monica. Again, Monica Miller is my guest. Uh, She is Director of Citizens for a Pro-Life Society, and you can find out more at ProLifeSociety.com. Where can they get the book? Just we get that out of the way. I'm going to say, since we're going to be focused on some some issues during the interview um, today, uh, Mark, they can go right to the website, which is uh, ProLifeSociety. No hyphens, no spaces. Right. All one word. ProLifeSociety.com. Okay. There's a link right at the top of the home page for the book, which I think takes you to St. Benedict Press, or it might take you to Amazon, one of the two, I can't remember, but it's a link to the book. But then, you know, I have my, my uh, magnum opus, shall I say, my article that, that I wrote on um, a, the, the history and the, the use and the defense of uh, abortion victim photos and pro-life work. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll talk about that the second so segment. So if, yeah. if they go to the website, they'll be able to find both things in one place. Okay, great. So let, let's talk about some of the uh, tactics, if you will, if you don't mind. Because uh, <laughs> that's really, I mean, like you say, the, the focus is on the aborted children. I mean, it yep. is those children. But there are tactics, and there are people involved in those uh you know, with Operation Rescue and Joe right. Scheidler, Pro-Life Action League, and that kind of thing. Uh, there was some rescuing going on oh, yes, during right. that time. If you would, and again, th- we're 2014. <laughs> yep. A lot of people don't remember. They weren't around. Uh, you know, in many regards, the pro-life movement has lost that entire, that that fervor, that, that no, zeal. I, no, I, I totally I, I So totally let's talk understand. about rescuing. Exactly what, 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 what was rescuing, per se? What was the Operation Rescue? Well, the pro-life rescue movement was something that was initiated in the, in the early to mid-1970s. So really, qu- quite a few years, 10 to 12 years even before Operation Rescue was, was, uh, was put together, um, mm-hmm. We were doing, we, the first rescue that I did was in 1978, and we didn't even call them rescues then. We, we, we called them sit-ins. Right. And, uh, and in fact, in the book, I, I talk about that first sit-in. Which is what we they were. At, at the Concord Medical Services in Chicago, which is now happily closed, but, and which we did a lot of sidewalk counseling at that clinic also. But I chronicle the rise of the sit-in, pro-life sit-in movement, the, the hopes that we had when we went into court to argue the case for the unborn child, the way in which the judicial system um, eventually they found a way to oppose us. 
um, which took them a little time, but they they found a legal argument by which we could no longer have what's called a defense of necessity, a common law defense. And so I chronicle all of that development. I, 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 I talk in detail about the trials that we had, in particular the one in Chicago, from the rescue that we did at Concord, and then later when I moved to Milwaukee, I was getting my Ph.D., I initiated the rescue movement in Milwaukee in the mid-1980s, even still before, that, was, that would have been a full two years before Operation Rescue uh, got off the ground. So I, w- I guess you could say I certainly was a pioneer mm-hmm. of, that, of that civil disobedience movement, and, and it really meant that we would simply use our bodies um, you know, arms linked t- together, perhaps, or whatever, and we would stand in front of the door uh, t- to the actual procedure rooms. So we would actually go into the clinic into the and building. block the hall. Yeah, into the building itself, into the yeah, offices. Yeah, we would, we would do it a number, of way, a number of different ways, but that was certainly one of the ways that we, we went actually into the abortion mill, stood in front of the door that led to the abortion chambers, and... Now we we would even have we would have sidewalk counselors down on the street to intercept women coming to the clinic while the rescue was going on and 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 try to persuade them to to, to keep their babies. We even had women who would go into the waiting room yeah. while the rescue was happening mm-hmm. um, and and try to offer literature and help to the moms in the waiting room. And we had we had rescues that actually shut the clinic down for the entire day. Uh, which meant all of the appointments were at least delayed, and those women were given a real opportunity to rethink their abortion decision. And, and, and you're right, um, there's, there's a number of uh, very unfortunate factors yeah and I, we, we've, we've got about a hey monica we've got about a, a minute before the break what i what i'd like to ask you on the whole rescue thing is uh why do you believe that it, we we stopped doing those and uh and then we'll carry it over into the next sec- well, segment i'm going to say the bottom line the real reason that we we lost leadership okay uh we we, we that we did we lost leadership and coupled coupled with and maybe it, it, these things are intertwined with each other the, the Freedom of Access to Clinic Entrances Act mm-hmm. came down like a sledgehammer yeah. on the pro-life activist movement, coupled with injunctions, local injunctions with their own penalties. And it was, I, it was really, I think it's a sad moment, really, a kind of indictment, I hate to say it, but, you know, I do believe in rescues. I think we should, should still be doing them, and really it's a, it's a, it's a leadership issue at this point. My guest is Dr. Monica Miller, and you can go to the website Citizens for a Pro-Life Society. That's The website is ProLifeSociety.com. You can get her book, Abandoned, The Untold Story of the Abortion Wars. I highly endorse it. Uh, it, it made me hearken back to the early days of my work here at Created Equal, and we'll be talking to Monica on the other side. Stick around. Don't go away. What do other pro-life leaders think of Mark Harrington and Created Equal? Listen to Scott Klusendorf of Life Training Institute. Created Equal is about changing this culture, and that's what we have to do if we are going to win this fight. And Mark and Seth and the others on the team of Created Equal are doing just that. And I am happy to endorse their work. Glad to call them fellow uh, uh, companions in this fight for the life of the unborn. And I certainly hope you will support and work with them as they work on reforming this culture so that it has an appreciation for human life. Mark Harrington is a missionary and free speech advocate, and Mark has been on the front line of the debate over abortion for over 20 years. Mark needs your prayers and financial support. Please support Mark and Created Equal by going to createdequal.net or send a check to Created Equal, Post Office Box 360502, Columbus, Ohio, 43230. Your gifts are tax deductible. <laughs> All right, we're back. My guest is Dr. Monica Miller, and she is the uh, director of Citizens for a Pro-Life Society. Folks, you got to get her book. If you're a pro-lifer, 
Okay, if you're opposed to abortion and you want to know what happened between the years of the 1970s and 80s and early 90s, this is the book. And it will inspire you to go out and do more now. And you can get the book by going to ProLifeSociety.com that is abandoned. The Untold Story of the Abortion Wars. And Dr. Miller is my guest here on the Mark Harrington Show. Uh, Monica, let's move from the rescue thing. I, I, I hate to do this. I know the, sh- the program's short, but we've got to really try to fit in a few things. Uh, you also, as one of the tactics back then, I mean, it really wasn't a tactic. You can explain it. Mm. But you retrieved aborted babies right. from dumpsters and other things. Tell us about that, would you? 1987, um, I was already living in Milwaukee, but I'd spent so many, so many years uh, doing pro-life activism in Chicago. I still had very, very close ties, particularly to, the, uh, to Joe Scheidler and the Pro-Life Action League. But it was discovered that a, an abortion clinic, the Michigan Avenue Medical Center, which kind of ironically I spent I'm, uh, hundreds of hours outside of that clinic talking women out of abortions, Mm-hmm. Little did we know that all those years, back in the 70s and the 80s, this abortion clinic was literally dumping the uh, bodies of the aborted babies in the trash dumpster in the alley behind the clinic. Wow. And we found out about this um, in 1987, in February of 1987. Um, I'm gonna, not going to go into all the details of how we found out. I mean, people can get all the details really in the book. By, by reading the book. But right. We, we retrieved, went to the alley uh, for about a period of two and a half months every week, and sometimes more than once a week, um, and we retrieved about 600 bodies of aborted babies uh, from the trash. And then, uh, unbelievable as this sounds, I thought, well, I'm done. I'm finished with this. This is just a one-time thing. i got to go back now and do conventional pro-life work, right? Right. <laughs> like getting arrested at clinics or right, whatever. Right, exactly. Um, but we, we then found out that a pathology lab in Northbrook, Illinois, called VitalMed, was uh, being used basically as another uh, huge dumping ground for... Um, about 10 different abortion clinics all over the United States. These clinics were shipping the victims, the bodies of the aborted babies, to the lab. The lab was simply leaving the boxes with the return labels, by the way. We knew exactly where these babies were coming from because the Mm. return labels of all of the abortion clinics were on the the boxes. And um, we spent a period of about 10 months throughout the year of 1988, retrieving the bodies of these, of these uh, victims. Uh, at the end of the retrieval process, we had over 5,000 bodies. So we spent a lot of time photographing the bodies not, right. and also the, the babies from 1987. And, and then the burials uh, that, that, we, that, we, that we arranged yeah, and, and, and uh, let me let me for these babies. Let's introduce that. And in the time we have, we want to get to the abortion victim photos, too. Right. But a lot of people would say, wow, I mean, how in the world did you handle that? I mean, these dead babies, these, these aborted children, you're retrieving from dumpsters, dumpsters, you're keeping, you're photographing. And the thing that I really was impacted by mostly in this whole story was the burials. Why did you feel compelled to bury them and give each one of them a burial? The, the burial of the dead is one of the seven corporal works of mercy, and th- uh, there was absolutely no question that we were going to perform that act of mercy. The only act of mercy that would ever be shown to these babies was that they would be buried. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was very, very important for us to consecrate them to the ground and provide them with the only humane gesture they would ever receive in, in, in this life. Um, right. And the photography was very, very important for us. We were very, uh, from the instant, there was no hesitation at all. We knew that we had, in a sense, the secret. We had found the secret of the abortion industry. The actual right. victims the evidence, were, in yeah. our, were literally in our hands. Yep. And we felt, uh, Mark, that it was, it was our responsibility to record, to chronicle the atrocity of abortion 
that is literally, literally written into the flesh and bones uh, of these babies. These babies ranged from six weeks through the seventh month of gestation. And I, and I, I, I got to say, we have some of the most spectacular uh, photos. Uh, disturbing, yes. Um, many of them you, you would certainly classify as graphic in nature. Uh, and people want to go and view them. They're, they're, we have a dedicated website, imagesofabortion.com. So all straight, mm-hmm. one word, imagesofabortion.com. And our photos are used in, in pro-life work in all, in all kinds of ways uh, and, and are available literally to anybody, even pro-abortion people. I mean, we don't put a limit. We don't put a restriction. Um, I, I don't believe in it. I just say these are available right. for whoever needs them or wants to use them. In the time we have left, Monica, give us the case for the use of the abortion photos themselves, the abortion victim photos, you, which you have a gigantic archive that you've now explained the origin of right. those images. Why is it important that the pro-life movement use them and America see them? Okay, the, the primary plight of an, of, of, of an unborn child slated for abortion is that they are invisible. They cannot be seen, they cannot be heard, they are a hidden victim. And and the other side, it's incumbent on the other side to deny their, not only just that they're human, to deny their existence. Mm -hmm. And I think it's absolutely essential for any social justice movement, and and, and ours is the most important, to expose to the public the atrocity of abortion. And I believe, when all is said and done, Mark, I believe that that the victim of abortion has a right to be seen. Right. They have, a, they have a right to be seen. They have a, 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 I don't care how disturbing it is, necessarily. I mean, I'm not saying go, go show your pictures at some sort of uh, you know, playground where there are children or something like that. Right. But they, they have a right to be viewed. They're, the brokenness and the injustice that happened to them, our society that promotes this injustice needs to see, and, they, and these babies have a right to be seen. I mean, to me, that's the bottom line. They have a right to be seen. Agreed. Dr. Monica Miller is my guest. Go to ProLifeSociety.com, get her book, Abandon. It chronicles all of this kind of thing. D- Dr. Miller, here, uh, we got about two minutes in, in, in the final parts of the program here. Um, they, they have a right to be seen, but then you have folks out there that say, what about children seeing them? Um, yeah, okay, these, I these don't, but these don't they, work. They, they, you know, all the arguments you hear that keep these hidden. Well, I know I'm not going to be able to say everything I would like to say in right. just a few minutes that are left, so let me do encourage people to take a look at the article. It was published in New Oxford Review. It's right. mounted on our website. I mean, I put it all together there in, in, in one article, but the children who see the photos, we're not aiming, first of all, we're not aiming the photos at children. Children will see the photos indirectly from what our, 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 our intention is all about. But I think that, look, at, we are living in a crisis moment. We are, we are in an emergency mode. And, 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 and the, vis, the visibility of the victim saves other children from being put to death. And I think you have to weigh that good against the possibility, the potential, that a, chi- a, a, a child, a born child, of course, would, would see the, 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 the image and be upset. I think you have to weigh those goods. I think there, mm-hmm. you, you have to use some prudence, perhaps, put up warning signs if you feel you need to do that, uh, you know, in far enough in advance before the, before the display is, 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 becomes visible to the motorist or whomever it is. But th- that, to me, is not, not a deal breaker. 30 okay? seconds, Monica, 30 seconds. Well, my thir- 30 seconds is that people simply need to get involved in the fight for life and not be hesitant and, and not hold back and do whatever we can to uh, reverse this culture of death and make it a culture of life. My guest has been Dr. Monica Miller of the Pro-Life Society, Citizens for the Pro-Life Society. And folks, again, I urge you, go to the website, ProLifeSociety.com. Order the book Abandoned. Also, go to ImagesOfAbortion.com. You'll see a lot of the photos of the babies that she retrieved from dumpsters in the backs of abortion mills. Folks, She's a hero. She rocks. Go to ProLifeSociety.com. Dr. Miller, thanks for being on the show. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America.
to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist, sponsored by Created Equal. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.